Okay, <clears throat> it's time to provide a little bit of an update on um, what's been going on with the market. Seven uh, redesign. Um, so I have a couple things to uh, to show that's been worked on and talk a little bit about something that's in process that I'll demonstrate later. Um, so um, over the last few bits, um, I've been working on wireframes, uh, making changes to um, the way that the programs get set up. Uh, in the last video, I showed some accessibility and showed how the Mark Tools windows changed. Um, the uh, Mark editors had some slight updates. Uh, you can see that the icons have gotten bigger. Uh, let's do a comparison here between six and seven. Uh, you can see the updates. Uh, the buttons are getting bigger, partly to make it a little bit easier to find things. Um, one of the other changes that uh, is happening right now is I'm going through and doing a um, analysis of all of the uh, um, shortcut keys that are assigned, uh, all of the shortcuts that are keyboard shortcuts, and um, unlike the rest of the application where right now there aren't very many, uh, they're all being um, updated and and added so that there should be, by the time this is finished, um, keys, uh, uh, keyboard keys for everything that um, you work with. All right, so let's go ahead and start with the editor. So the big thing, one of the big things I've been working on has been performance. This isn't something you can see, um, but it's something you can feel. So uh, I'm gonna go ahead and take the uh, mark editor here and I'm gonna go ahead and open this file here. This file is a very large file. It's a, um, 300 and 50 megabytes, uh, it's pretty significant in size. Um, when we open it into um, the Mark Editor in the 6.0 series, uh, you can see that it, it takes a little bit of time. That's actually not unexpected. It's a big file. Um, has to do the paging. You'll see down here, process took about 16 seconds. Uh, if we go over here and reopen that file um, in uh, the 7.0 version, um, the way that the application handles uh, the um, reading of the data has changed slightly. Um, but this made it more efficient. You see for this particular instance, uh, it took 12 seconds to render the data um, for this particular file. Um, uh, you're seeing that generally that that's, that's actually the case, that the, uh, the rendering of the file is usually improving um, on large sets um, by a uh, factor of sometimes um, four to uh, seven seconds. Uh, that'll continue to get better um, as I continue to uh, uh, tweak and work with the uh, process and, and continue doing some optimization because uh, right now I really haven't optimized any of the, uh, the rendering code. Um, so that's a, that's a difference and you'll also notice this difference when you save the file. Um, saving um, used to take uh, for a file this large, about 10 seconds to save the file, and then um, whatever the time was to, to re-render it. Um, at this point, uh, saving for a file of about this size takes somewhere in the neighborhood of um, uh, one to uh, one and a half seconds. So a significant difference in terms of um, how the application handles file management, uh, which should be, uh, hopefully, a big improvement for folks. Let's see here. Um, the other difference uh, that's being introduced um, in, uh, that I've taken care of has been how we add XML functions. Um, let me show you the previous version. Let me show you the Marks Edit 7 version. So in 6, uh, the previous way that this was done in the Edit Tools, Edit Functions list, you get an intermediary menu here um, where you could potentially add a new function or you would then uh, select one to edit. Um, you would get these multiple windows, and when you were finished, you'd close it and refresh the list. Uh, Mark Edit 7, um, this has been combined into a single um, uh, window um, to edit an existing uh, function, which is fine, the one that you're interested in looking at. And click Modify, and the program will pull those up. Um, you want to create um, a uh, new function the first time it opens when everything is empty. Um, we can start adding stuff here and when you save it, it will save as a new defined function. Um, 
There's also going to be an XML function wizard. The XML function lizard wizard is something that I'm working on right now. Um, it'll take you through some steps. So one of the things that um, I've done with Marquette is I include a lot of XSLT templates that I don't uh, define for the user because they tend to not be ones that most people will use. Um, in the templating process, there will be a wizard that will walk you through a set of steps, um, ask you questions about what you're doing, um, and based on those steps, it'll offer you options, either selections of templates that already exist. Um, it'll walk you through the process of filling this form out, so you actually don't have to fill out this form. You can walk through the, the process and answer questions, and it'll generate um, all of the same data as you would fill into this form, because I know this, this form is sometimes confusing. Um, the other thing that it'll do is it'll allow you to interact with a, um, a, a XML JSON profiler. So this is a new tool being created, and I'm, I'm going to um, probably over the weekend be able to, to demonstrate that, where um, I get asked a lot for folks to um, help with creating uh, translations for one-offs. don't have time for that. Uh, this will actually let you point to an XML file, um, choose the element that represents the record set, um, and then treat the XML file like it's a delimited file. So it'll go through the same operations as you'd use for the delimited text translator. Uh, this allows the translations to be um, reused um, and allows me to save them into the application, um, but it allows users to be able to take control over um, formats that may not be well known or that they just don't have a, a familiarity with. Um, the example that um, I'm working with right now is PassPerfect. Uh, this is, data comes out in PassPerfect's XML file, file format. Uh, each each uh, collection that we work with uses that format slightly differently. Um, I can, uh, through this process, um, translate the metadata without having to create a standalone XSLT since they'll be different for every uh, uh, project that, that I work with. Um, so I think it's an, an interesting approach. I'll be curious to start getting feedback um, when uh, people are able to play with it. Um, anyways, uh, for the week, it doesn't look like um, a lot of stuff got done, but uh, the uh, work on the Mark Editor, particularly the optimization work, was uh, specifically time consuming. Um, but I think that the uh, speed improvements will end up being worth it. So um, that's what's been done so far, and hopefully by um, this next weekend, I'll be able to um, demonstrate the wizards and the, the profiler um, for folks who are interested.